Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create a technical ranking system for stocks using R code. As an overview, I'm gonna have 10 factors that will be used to rank a certain stock, and I'll go over those momentarily. For now, we're just gonna load up some packages. On line 11, I'm just gonna source some functions to get data from my database, but I have adjusted the code to get data from Yahoo Finance, and we're gonna be using daily data. We also need a vector of stock symbols, so I'm just gonna load up all of the stocks in the SPY. And in this next block, I'm going to assign a benchmark and a risk-free rate. So I'm going to be using the SPY as the benchmark and we're going to use the one-year rate for the risk-free rate. We want to make sure that the rates are using the same dates as our benchmark. So we're going to subset for only trading days using is business day. We're going to fix the NAs and then convert that rate into a daily rate. For the technical factors, I'm going to be using these 10. So I'll go over them very briefly. For the beta, I'm just going to be ranking stocks based on the upside beta. The higher the upside beta in a three month window, the better the rank. Number two will be a sharp ratio given a three month window. Number three is relative volume. So in a three month period, we're going to take average and then compare it to the most recent. For momentum, I'm just going to look at the last three months and return the percentage change for that stock within those three months. I chose three months arbitrarily. You could change the code to have a longer or shorter look back period and for the 52 week range we want to see where the stock is trading currently compared to the 52 week high and the 52 week low using the same approach as number five we're going to take a look at the past five trading sessions and see where the stock price is at compared to the last five sessions number seven we're going to be using drawdowns and that's the max drawdown within the three month period number eight is value at risk we want to measure how much a stock can lose on any given day for number nine we're going to use the alpha compared to the benchmark given a three month window. And lastly, the active premium, which is the assets return minus the benchmark return. Starting in line 44, we're gonna create a function to return those factors for each of the stocks. So as you see in line 47, all we need to pass in is a date and a vector of tickers. Whatever you pass in for as of, we'll calculate and return the factors using this date as the last date for the calculation. So it'll look back three months from the date you pass in. And of course the vector of tickers to be used in the calculations. So we're gonna start off by creating a range we're gonna convert the as of date, and that'll be our ending date. We're gonna subtract three months from that date to create a start, and then we're gonna use pay zero to create that range. And similarly, we're gonna use the last 52 weeks, which is one year subtracted from the end date. Once we have those ranges, we're gonna pass in all of our tickers, and for each, it'll print out the progress, so you'll be able to see the stock, its position, and the percentage of completion. We're gonna get open, high, low, closed volume data from our database, and again, I wrap this in the try so that if it returns an error, it'll use Yahoo Finance for our source. We're going to calculate daily returns for the stock and the benchmark. We're going to fill any innates with zero. And the very first factor we're going to calculate is the beta. And we're going to use cap and beta bool. And of course, we're going to subset the returns only for that range that we pass in. For the sharp ratio, I decided to do something different. Instead of subtracting the risk-free rate from the return of the stock, I'm going to be subtracting the return of the benchmark from our mean return of the stock, and then dividing by the standard deviation of returns of our stock. For the volume, we're going to multiply the close times the volume to get the dollar volume. We're going to take the last observation of that dollar volume and divide it by the mean to get the relative volume for that particular stock. For momentum, we're going to take the last observation and divide that by the first observation within our range to get the total return within those three months. To get the accumulation distribution for both the 52 weeks and the weekly, all we're doing is we're going to take the range, we're going to extract the max and the min, and we're going to subtract the last from our min and divide that by the range, which is just the max and the min for both the 52 weeks and for the week. For max drawdown, we're going to take the minimum of all of our drawdowns within our range. So performance analytics has some cool functions to extract the remaining factors. Once we calculate all the factors, we're going to combine everything into a data frame and it'll calculate all these factors for the vector of symbols that you have assigned and just returned one data frame for all. So here in the next block, we're going to do just that. So to use the function, we need to pass in an end date and the vector of tickers and everything should get assigned in factors. So we'll take a look at that data frame. So it was able to get all the stocks where we have our symbol, the date, and all of our factors. For each of these factors, we need to create a rank. So in the next block, we're gonna use the function called rank, which returns the position of the highest to lowest. And we're gonna divide that by the number of rows and ranks. And since I have 10 factors, I'm gonna multiply all these ranks by the scale, which is one divided by 10, to create a weighted technical score, which is in line 147. And then we're gonna multiply that by 10, so that our range in technical scores are 
from 0 to 10. And then finally, just order from highest to lowest. So if we take a look at ranks here, the stock with the highest score was HCA with a score of 8.5. And it's also a good idea to double check to make sure that you're ranking these correctly. So if we sort betas from highest to lowest, we see that WBD had the highest score. And if we go to factors and we rank the betas as well from highest to lowest, we see that in fact, WBD had the highest score. So just make sure that you double check to make sure that you're ranking these correctly. Now that we have our technical scores, we can go ahead and add another column for the percentage return of each of these stocks the following month to see how well they performed. So in the very next block, we're gonna pass in our ranks. We're gonna grab the stock symbol, grab the data, and get the monthly return for that stock. And we're gonna return that as a column. So if we take a look at latest, we now have a new column with the percentage return for February. And lastly, what we want to do is to double check how well a basket of these would have performed compared to the benchmark. So we're going to grab the very first one. We're going to create a basket of three stocks, five stocks, 10 stocks, and 20 stocks. So the very last block is just going to print out the returns for the benchmark, the basket of one stock, three, five, 10, and 20 stocks. So when I ran this, the benchmark returned 4.84%. And with the exception of the basket with five, it seems that the returns were increasing and I assumed an equal weight portfolio for all of these baskets. So it would be a good idea to test whether or not we can see an outperformance if we add stocks outside the SPY. But with that guys, this concludes the video. This is not investment advice. This is just for backtesting purposes. I'll go ahead and provide a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.